today's episode, I would like to ask you a question. What do you do when team members fail? What do you do when team members fail? Perhaps someone on the team doesn't get something done in time when they said they would or when the client thought they would. Perhaps you've been in this situation yourself where you committed to get something done by a certain time and it didn't happen and you're worried about the consequences. Things like this wreak havoc in schedules and they wreak havoc on team cultures when they're not addressed. It's very common, however, especially in an industry like architecture where deadlines are so important. So you end up having to push your internal deadlines, timelines grow, and it seems you may be even given up on ever possibly meeting a strict deadline. Like this is a very difficult place to be. Now in today's episode, I'm going to take you behind the scenes here at Business of Architecture and show you how our team here at Business of Architecture screwed up, how we screwed up and how we handled it. And the goal here is that hopefully you can learn from the way that we handled this and see how you might apply these principles to your firm. Now, in case you didn't notice, here at Business of Architecture, we missed three weeks of publishing a podcast. And I, as a leader in the company, I'm committed to releasing a podcast episode every single week. And we've done this pretty much consistently for the past 10 years. So I was, let's say I was not very happy. (laughs) I was pretty unhappy when I discovered this. Now, in many companies and cultures, we would just say, oh, well, and we would just move on. In this episode, you get to hear how we handled it here at Business of Architecture. Hello, and welcome back architect nation so today we have a very special episode for you here at business of architecture it is one of our mantras to lead from what we live meaning that we try our darndest to make sure that we are actually implementing and doing all the things that we talk about and all the things that we teach and so i'm here publicly actually to tell you my audience and listeners that i failed you so we had a bit of a hiccup or more than a hiccup here at business of architecture i uh, earlier this week I discovered that we had not posted any episodes over the Christmas and New Year's holiday, and it was there was a lot of reasons for that. We're not going to go into the reasons, but I was pretty upset when it happened initially. Um, of course, there's all sorts of thoughts that go into one's head when things like this happen in a business. I blame myself. Why wasn't I paying attention? I was blaming my team. Why didn't they get things done in time? They know what they're supposed to do. I mean, all these things were happening. So this is first thing I want to let you know is that Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today is about um, when there's lapses in a business in terms of teamwork, in terms of processes, but basically when the, what happens when the balls get dropped. And so what we're hoping from this conversation today is that you can see a little bit behind the curtain of business of architecture to see how we run our business, how we coach our clients and, and uh, the firms we work with, how we coach them to, uh, to run their businesses. And you can see that we're actually, you know, just being very open and transparent with the little miniature fire we had in our, in our business here and uh, how we dealt with that. And then the lessons that you'll learn, hopefully from this experience, we'd love to hear your feedback. So I invited my colleague here, Ryan Willard on the podcast with us today to discuss this. Ryan, how are you today? I'm very good. Thank you, Enoch. Thank you for All having right. me. Okay. You bet. Good to be here. So as a, as I mentioned again, it's a special podcast episode, and I'm gonna what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna jump into and I'm gonna provide you with I'm just gonna play the audios. Uh, so when I discovered that we hadn't released any podcast episodes, um, as I mentioned, I was pretty upset. But I have my own method to process because the last thing we want to do is we want to you know lash out at our team members. So there's two ways that I've basically seen people handle conflict. That are, that are unhealthy ways, right? Number one is to get aggressive, which is where you start yelling at people, you demean them, um, you have negative energy towards them. And then the second is more passive, where we just kind of shrug it off. We don't deal with it. We say, well, pff, say la vie, I guess we'll just do better next time. Okay, that is not the way that we teach to leave, and that's lead, and that's not the way that we aspire to lead here at Business of Architecture. So what we aspire to do and what we teach is the middle road, which is calm assertiveness. So the first step for me was to go through my own process, to look at my emotions, look at where I was blaming other people. And number one is to take full responsibility myself. First, that's step number one. Step number two was then to realize that all of my team members are human beings just like I am and that I've dropped balls in the past and that this is simply a lapse of integrity that we need to restore. restore. There's nothing here that is Uh, You know, I have incredible team members. I'm fully confident in their ability. And so what we needed to do is to take this situation, figure out 
what to do next. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to let you listen to these audios. These are the audios that I sent to my team about an hour after I discovered our laps. Um, so you can hear those. And then after that, when we get back here, Ryan and I are going to discuss that situation. And then we're going to roll into how this relates to having effective teams and, and so much more uh, in your architecture practice. So with that, here is my mess. Here are my messages to the team. Hello, podcast team. I hope you're having an amazing day today. The purpose of this message is because I just realized that we have not published a podcast episode, uh, Business of Architecture, since December 21st for the BOA Global Podcast and December 18th for the BOA UK Podcast. Now, we as a team are completely, completely out of integrity with this, and uh, there's huge and massive impacts because of this. So first thing I want to state at the beginning of this little message is that uh, I accept 100% responsibility for the fact that we have not released a podcast in almost three weeks. This has never happened before in the history of business of architecture, period. Now, having said that, while I do accept 100% uh, responsibility, this is something that I've delegated to our podcast team, which consists of Ruth, Suresh, and Ryan. Um, I'm very surprised that no one told me that we are uh, that we were way behind on podcast number one and that number two we didn't release any podcasts now there's probably a lot of reasons and considerations and things that are going through your head right now wanting to defend why why we didn't produce the podcast and i'm sure they're all very valid and they all make a whole lot of sense but the at the end of the day the fact is is that we didn't release any podcast episodes period now, Ruth, it's your responsibility to clarify, once again, I'm telling you, it is your responsibility to make sure that a podcast episode is scheduled, ready to go, um, and we are four weeks out in terms of podcasts that are ready. So if you remember, back in, I think it was November, I made a bit of an effort on my side to make sure that, to push you guys, right, to push the process forward to make sure that we were four weeks ahead. We got four weeks ahead, and it was my understanding that we were going to stay four weeks ahead, all right? Now, that obviously didn't happen, so I've learned an important lesson from this in terms of my own leadership, but what I want to do here is I need to have uh, a meeting with all three of us, well, I guess all four of us, Suresh, Ruth, and Ryan, because this, uh, this shows something about our accountability and our integrity. Um, again, uh, no reason to, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not interested in any reasons, considerations, or what we might otherwise call as, you know, excuses for why this didn't happen. The fact is it didn't happen. And so, you know, when we look at the facts here, um, uh, you know, Ruth, it's your responsibility again to make sure those podcasts are scheduled. Ryan, it's your responsibility to make sure that uh, we have enough content in terms of um, uh, interviews to make sure that those things are all lined up so that Suresh and uh, Ruth can do their job. And then Suresh, it's also your job uh, to make sure that the podcasts are um, basically available on time to be scheduled. Now, I know, you know, Suresh and Ruth, I know from your perspective, uh, you may be thinking at this point, um, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because, and I'm going to continue this in another audio, just a second. Uh, so Suresh and Ruth, I understand, you know, from your perspective, it may seem like uh, I don't understand how I can be held accountable for something when Ryan is higher up in the company than I am. You know, if Ryan doesn't do the, uh, the interviews, I basically have no, you know, nothing I can do because I'm not the boss, right? Okay, I get it. Now, this is the way I definitely used to think when I was working in a company. However, what we need to understand here and what I'd like you to get, what I'd like to invite you to get, is that leadership goes both ways. It goes from the bottom to the top as well as from the top to the bottom. And, you know, ultimately, because I'm the leader of the company, that doesn't mean I can force you to do anything. So I don't really have any more leverage over you um, when you really look at it than you have over me over Ryan, right? Ultimately, it's about holding people accountable. And if someone on your team, which is in this case the podcast team, is not performing, it's your opportunity to rise as a leader and to hold them accountable. And this is something you're going to have to deal with, right? Not only in terms of this business context, but also in terms of other areas of your life. And I can guarantee that for every single one of us, uh, this lapse in the podcast uh, production and release is representative of other areas in our life where we're not paying attention to the details, where we're letting things slip where we're not holding people accountable, where we're not having conversations, where we're not confronting people, and it all boils down to being out of integrity. Now, what I'd like to invite all of us to do here is to look at this from a powerful frame, to not get defensive, to look at this, take 100% responsibility for this as a team and individually, as in we have not 
you know, we have not done this. It's not anything to do with someone else. We're not going to point fingers. We're not going to blame. But what we're going to say is that we need to put into place a system and a process and make sure we're on the same page so that this never, ever, ever, ever happens again. All right? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to schedule a quick meeting. It can just be a 15-minute meeting uh, with all, all of us there at the same time uh, because we really I want to make sure that everyone understands, especially, um, um, well, especially very deeply, what it means to be an in integrity and, and the responsibilities that are surrounding the podcast. And we can also make any changes that are needed going forward to make sure that this never happens again. This is Enoch, over and out. All right. The, hey, the last thing I want to just say with regarding this little episode here is that there are, there are impacts, right? So there are impacts for having not released a podcast episode in three weeks. Um, you know, our mission here is transformation, transformation of ourselves. And this is an opportunity for us to all transform as a team, but also transformation of our clients, right? And the larger architecture community. Now, architects listen religiously to the business of architecture podcasts. And when we stand for integrity, when we stand for doing what we say we're going to do, when we stand for our word and we don't do something like release the podcast, it is a horrible reflection on ourselves as an organization. All right. So I'm going to address this uh, on a podcast episode and uh, we will release this to the community and we will take ownership of this and we will let them know that we are going to prevent this from ever happening again uh, because this impacts their uh, their transformation. Right. I want you to consider that. Right. Is that there are people listening to the podcast who who didn't get a podcast for three weeks and maybe that was their opportunity to be inspired. Maybe that was their opportunity to move ahead in life. Maybe they had some really difficult challenge that they were dealing with, and the podcast could have been the thing that would have given them insight or helped them in where they're at in their life. So these are just some of the impacts. Many of them are invisible that we can't even see or understand, but there are impacts when we get out of integrity. This is Enoch, over and out. All right. Welcome back. So Ryan, obviously I mentioned you on that audio. You were part of the conversation here. I'm curious, you know, what was your initial reaction um, upon hearing that and realizing that we dropped the ball here? Can I use expletives here? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just warn them. Okay. There's going to be some expletives. Go ahead. Yeah. It was like, oh, shit. Like, and my initial reaction was blame mm -hmm. and, and was blaming somebody else. And, you know, I'm responsible. I've got this ag agreement, you know, f to have an episode out each week. And I was annoyed. I was angry. I wanted to blame somebody else. I wanted to, to blame the other parts of the team. Um, and kind of like, you know, I had been for a process of, of delegating stuff. And in my mind, I was like, I've, I've dealt with this. This should be just sorted. And then, you know, when we, and I knew it was a, it was a conversation around integrity, it was a kind of piecing together my responsibility for it and actually like really taking it, taking it on. And I know that you was, it was, you had kind of taken responsibility of it as, as well. And, but it was also like, no, let me own that. I'm the, I'm the leader in this, in this sense, in this domain of being the, the, the podcast host and we've discussed how it works and what the workflow is. And yeah, so it was kind of letting go of the annoyance and the blame and then recognizing my own failings and my own faults, um, what I hadn't done, where I dropped the ball and how I hadn't been paying attention. And, you know, and that was when I restored, I think the first thing I did to, shortly after was to restore, restore integrity with you. Indeed. You know, we, Indeed. We have, yeah, it we was have, great. We have that process of restoring integrity and it was like, okay, look, I'm out of integrity. Here's what I said. Here's what I said I was going to do. Here's what I did. Here's, here's the impact. So actually really getting the impact of, of, um, of, you know, of us dropping the ball, really considering the broader aspect of the impact, how it affects the audience, how it affects the guys listening, how it affects our clients, how it affects the team how it affects me, how it affects you, how it affects our relationship. Um, so really considering the, the breadth of the, of the impact and the consequences of it. And then we can start being constructive over creating a new structure 
to powerfully move forward and to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Now, we, we do use a slightly different distinction around integrity, one that, that people aren't normally uh, normally accustomed to, unless you've come across the work of Werner Erhard. Uh, we give him credit for this amazing distinction, uh, the work of the Landmark Education. You'll find this concept throughout the Landmark's programs, um, both of which Ryan and I have had the opportunity to, to understand. It's really helped us a lot. So, But what is, Ryan, if you could explain, what is the distinction about integrity? If you could just define that, because we're going to be using that word quite a bit in this episode. So integrity is defined as a state of being complete and whole right that's the simple that's one of the um, dictionary definitions of it there are also other dictionary definitions of the word integrity which refer to you know somebody of being moral upright standing and someone being of, of virtuousness and we're not interested in that distinction where we're talking about it being right or wrong we're simply looking at integrity as being a function of something being complete or not complete. If something is complete and whole, then it is in full integrity. If it's not complete, it's without integrity. And the analogy that you'll hear Werner Erhard use and a lot of these other leaders is, is the one of the bicycle wheel. And if you imagine a bicycle wheel being in complete integrity, all the spokes are tuned up and they're all creating a perfectly circle wheel and that wheel works effectively and efficiently and it is the best performance you'll get out of the bicycle when one of those spokes is loose the wheel is no longer true it is deformed it's out of shape and then the performance of the wheel decreases it becomes ineffective All right so that's what how we're defining integrity as a concept um and and kind of we're taking the the moralistic part of it out because often when we hear it in common parlance you know that person's lacks integrity we often think of someone who's doing underhand things i mean you know or someone who's you know not a very nice person or yeah so we we make it mean something about the value of a person or about our own person at a very core level right and i know because having kids we have these conversations often that uh, as you can imagine, as a parent, sometimes we need to correct our children, right? And it's very normal for them to feel as if something is wrong with them as a human being. Yes. Right? They kind of go into this idea that, wow, not only did what I do was wrong, but there's there's something wrong about me. There's something flawed with me. And so we, we just need to make that distinction, as Ryan pointed out, that when we talk about integrity, uh, especially in a team dynamic or personal dynamics, spouses, relationships, everything that, that we don't fall into and that we help other people not fall into this, this human trap of feeling that, um, that there's something moral about it, right? Meaning that it means something about our being or, or who we are as a person or our values as a human being. It means nothing of something of nothing of the sort. And, uh, we love in the work of Werner Erhard how they use the term uh, workability, which is a nice, a nice example of, of, you know, you need integrity to have workability. Yes. Yeah, abs absolutely. And um, right. it, it, yeah, that, that important aspect of it is the removing the right or wrong, removing the good or bad. Yeah. From it. Yeah, it's work, absolutely. Work, absolutely. Workability. I mean, yeah. And if you were, <laughs> you know, and it seems like, well, so <laughs> reminds me of the old Catholic school, you know, it's like, wow, you came out of that situ that, 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 uh, that experience. And, uh, well, I mean, in my, I'll speak to my own heritage, you know, coming from the, the Puritan kind of, you know, Puritan work ethic, it's very much drilled into you kind of this, this, this feeling of right and wrong. And so then when you mm -hmm. get to start to talk about, you know, integrity and improving performance, it's very easy to fall back into the trap of I'm, I'm deficient and there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. right, so that, that's a danger zone we want to stay away from so that we make that clear and you'll hear on the, on the audio, as you heard on the audio I shared with my team, I will use things that maybe sound might sound demeaning to the team in terms of the typical way that integrity is talked about. Um, but one thing that we have at our team is an understanding that integrity is not something moralistic. It doesn't mean anything about us as people. Should we not? Because let's face it, um, we're never going to be perfectly integrity. It's a continual journey, right? 
So Ryan, let's, so when we talk about, so integrity is the idea of something being whole, obviously in a team setting, this would be a team. When you have a team that's functioning like that bicycle wheel, as you said, where all the spokes are perfectly tensioned, it's, it's humming along. It's perfectly true. You're getting the highest performance out of the team. And that's it's really incredible when things work like that. Right. And that's not going to be possible without integrity. So Ryan, you mentioned that there's a process, again, that we've learned um, through the work of Werner Erhard about restoring integrity. Michael Jensen, Harvard professors, talked a lot about this as well. Um, would you walk us through what that means to restore integrity? Because that's important to this conversation. Yes. And before I do that, I'm going to explain what integrity means when we're talking about it in relation to a person. Right. So we've used the kind of mechanical example of when integrity is out in an object that it's no longer workable. Well, what does that mean for a human being? What does that mean for a person? And really, an integrity of a person is their word, right? It's what it is that, um, you know, the kind of first level of it is their word. And integrity for a person is a matter of a person's word. In Landmark, they say nothing more, nothing less. And it's doing what you say you are going to do. I said I was going to be at the meeting at seven o'clock. It's now one minute past seven. There is a lack of integrity there, right? There's, there's nothing moralistic, moralistically right or wrong about it. There's nothing ethical about it. It's just there's an unworkability that is now present. And that has been reflected in the words that I said and the actions that I performed. They did not correlate, right? So in business, you know, this is the kind of foundation of everything is that I say something, I speak something, I have my word, and then I do it or I don't do it. If I don't do it, there is a lack of integrity there. And I need to be able to clean it up and deal with the consequences of not being my word. And it's Absolutely. very interesting. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see in everyday life, like, where am I saying things and then not doing what I said? Okay. Yeah, it's become, and that's, becomes, there's a lot. <laughs> I find a lot. It becomes a very uncomfortable process when we start yes, looking indeed. and we realize that, you know, we, I have a lack of integrity in my life. It sounds like a pretty heavy statement, right? But it's actually sure. yeah, it in, does. Yeah. In, in, incredibly freeing when I can be inside of like, I have no integrity, right? That's right. Yeah. Because we can, then we can do something about it. Then we can start yep. rest restoring it rather than just... Yep ignoring it. So the, the principle there is that in, integrity for a person is your word. Okay. Beautiful. It's, it, Beautiful. It's, it's, it's what you're speaking about. And in order to keep integrity or honoring your word, there's two things that you can do. Number one is you just do what it is that you said you were going to do. So you've just kept your word. Fantastic. Happy days. Said I was going to be here at seven o'clock. I was here at seven o'clock. Great. The second way that you can honor your word is whenever you know that you won't be keeping your word, just as soon as you become aware that that's about to happen, then you communicate it and you say to everyone who's going to be impacted. Firstly, I'm not going to be keeping my word on this thing that I said I was going to do. Secondly, that in order to keep my word or to keep the word in the future, here's what I'm going to be doing, or I won't do, I won't do that. I won't be keeping it all keeping my word at all. And the final thing is what you will do to deal with the impact of the others of the failure of keeping your word. Okay. There you go. Beautiful. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll just go for that again, just to be clear, right? So the first part is you can, when you know that you're not going to be able to keep your word, you communicate that you will not be keeping your word. Secondly, that you will keep that word in the future. Okay. And by when, or, or you communicate that I'm not going to be keeping my word at all. So for example, and then the final part is what you will do, what you will do to deal with the impact on the failures of not being able to keep your word. So for example, I'm running late for a meeting. As soon as I know that I'm running late for that meeting, I pick up the phone and I say, Enoch, I'm running late for the meeting. Okay. And then I can communicate. I'm going to be here at this, at this part time. I, I, I left late and I'm, you know, own, own it. I left late, no excuses. Oh, there's so much traffic or there's blah, 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 blah. I left late. I didn't give myself enough time. And in the future, 
I'm going to leave half an hour earlier. Okay, and you can get mad and be like, oh, you know, there's there's loads of stuff here. We're going to be late. We're going to be okay. And I need to be able to deal with that impact on you. Okay. Yeah. So so that's the process of honouring your word in integrity. Okay. Well, let's show we let's demonstrate that now with the audience here, and allow me to walk me through restoring uh, integrity with our audience, Ryan. I'll let you. Okay. I'll let you lead so, 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 so restoring integrity is slightly different. Yep. Okay. Thank so you. The, so for that the, distinction, the 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 process here of restoring integrity is kind of after the fact. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So the honouring yeah. honouring the word is you're kind of having a mini restoration before you've broken your word yeah yeah restoring yeah, integrity here is after you've broken your word and now you've got to clean up the mess that's happened right so to restore your word you acknowledge firstly that i didn't keep my word said i was going to do this and i did that acknowledge the impact to others about not keeping your word and finally what you will do to deal with that impact and restore integrity and keep your word in the future beautiful okay yep so so, th so this is walk, really walk me through that then guide me through that ryan so for example let, let's say here with the with our audience um and, I, and i'll always use integrity like kind of do it in the first person so you own it so Correct. it's yours yeah right so i have i had an agreement to and an expectation to deliver a podcast every single week right? 52 weeks of the year for business of architecture. I did not keep that agreement. I broke my word. We went three weeks without uh, a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the first part. No now, excuses. Let me pause you there for a second, Ryan. Um, what do you do in a situation where, for instance, I don't know that I've ever, I don't know that I've ever, and I may have, but this is part of my foggy memory, explicitly told and promised to the audience that I would release a podcast every single week. Right. However, mm -hmm. I believe that there is a, there's an understanding sort of a, an unsaid agreement that my listeners expect there to be a weekly podcast, both for the UK podcast and the BOA podcast. How do we, cause this is going to come up in team situations as well, where, you know, there's maybe it hasn't been clearly spelled out. Yeah. And so part of the part of integrity is doing what is, expected of you right yeah. even though if it hasn't been explicitly stated yeah, that's right, right? Yeah. so there's and you know standing inside being responsible for other people's expectations of you unless you've explicitly said you know it would it would have been integrity for us for example if we said for the next three weeks we're not having a podcast because we're now we've set the expectation yep. yep but for the fact that there's been close to a decade of podcasts every single week, yep. there's a pretty good expectation that there'll be one over Christmas. That's right. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, good. Okay. So first step number one is, you know, I acknowledge that uh, I didn't check in with the team. I wasn't monitoring the podcast production. And so as a result, we didn't release podcasts um, since the middle of January. And right now it's the beginning of, uh, or, I'm sorry, the middle of December. And right now it's the, almost the middle of January. Okay. So that's what happened. Great. Now the impact of that, I'll go into the impact, right? So as Ryan mentioned, the impact of that, and I kind of described it in my audio, the impact is that number one, there's, there's impact on you, the listener. You may have set aside some time during Christmas time or, or over the holidays to catch up on some business of architecture episodes. You may have lost the opportunity to be inspired by what one of our guests said. There's also an impact on your trust on us as an organization, because now you think, well, these business of architecture guys, they might be kind of flaky here. They are. They just, you know, where was the podcast? They would no mention of it. Right. So those are, those are some of the impacts. And if you know any impacts or if you've had impacts, please write in to me. I'd love to hear what you feel the impact has been. All right. Now we went ahead in terms of restoring integrity here. So in terms of figuring out and putting into place something so that this doesn't happen in the future, we had a team meeting. Ryan, we looked at our processes, we looked at our systems, we looked at the accountability, we clarified the roles of who's responsible for what, and we recommitted and we created the possibility of being a really a world-class content team. So there you, there you have it, Business of Architecture listeners. 
Um, that's, that's what happened. And we're here to serve you. We're here to continue to produce excellent content. Ryan, did I leave anything out? No, that was great. Uh, and, and, you know, you. the, the, the part of, um, inviting the audience and anyone who's listening here to let us know what was the impact for you of us not doing that, that because there's a lot of impact that we don't know about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And beautiful. The, and obviously there was the impact on us as a team and the kind of the, the delay and the shock and the kind of yeah. having to yeah. go through all the process and, the, and the blaming and the resentment and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Now I want, I want our listeners, I want you to, who's listening to this, I want you to imagine what it's like to be in an organization where integrity is honored at a level uh, like, like we're attempting to, to demonstrate here. Right. So it's actually a pretty powerful thing because me as the CEO and leader of the business, um, Ryan, I'm going to read just a, an excerpt of what you sent me in terms of restoring integrity, if that's okay. Uh-huh. Um, because this is so powerful. So it really restores my confidence in Ryan. It just, it's just such a powerful thing. So Ryan wrote me a message in Slack. He said, I have a commitment to have a podcast released every week on BOA and BOA UK. So this isn't a private message that Ryan sent to me. That did not happen. I've pushed things downstream and there's been no accountability to make sure that uh, things get executed. I was not aware that the episodes were not getting published, which shows how I had unsuccessfully delegated these tasks. The impact is loss of trust with our audience and prospective clients and potential damage to future revenue. Also, there's an impact in the team with loss of trust and frustration towards other team members. And so Ryan goes on to say, I'm going to, I'm committed to creating something that works We will put into place a new structure for the workflow and production, and I want to create the possibility of BOA having a world-class content team. So, I mean, this imagine as as a firm leader when there's breakdowns in the organization like this that this is how your the whole team members respond. I mean, this is just it's an incredible thing. I have to tell you, to be on the receiving end of that, Ryan was just uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, shall, shall we, shall we, let, let's talk about, so there, we, we put the lid on that. Okay. Let's talk about the, the broader conversation here and how this affects our, our clients. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about some of the challenges that happen when there's a breakdown in integrity in an organization. And then we'll talk about what's possible when integrity is adhered to. And then of course, if you want to know how to implement this kind of culture in your practice, we're happy to guide you through that through our smart practice program. Uh, you know how to get a hold of us in terms of that. All right. So the number one problem that you may be experiencing as a firm owner running a practice is no easy matter. And you may feel like there's overwhelm. You feel like you have a to-do list a mile long, not enough time to get it done. You feel like you're constantly firefighting. You're reacting to things. You just feel like you don't have the mental space to attack things proactively because it seems like you're just getting pulled in one direction after another. Okay. Number two, and these aren't, this isn't an exhaustive list, but this is kind of the top list that we put together. You may experience that you have loss of staff. So it's a real bummer when team members leave, especially if they're highly trained or they have a lot of institutional knowledge. It's a bummer when you have discontented staff. So maybe those things aren't communicated. So you've, you've probably been on both ends of the spectrum here, been an employee of someone where you had some discontent or you're currently an employer and you know that there's some discontent within the ranks. Maybe either that's communicated or not. And, um, you know, having teams that complain, if not externally, at least internally teams, team members who are resistant, right. To doing what you want. So you may feel like you have to tell them again and again and again, and there's sort of this passive resistance that can be one of the most frustrating things to building a high performance team. Number three would be dealing with delays, deadlines being missed, right? Expecting something to be done, going to look at the drawing set, finding out there's a lot of information still missing. Oh, great. Now I have to stay up late myself to take this on, or the project manager has to take this on. One person has to take the brunt of trying to get the drawings out, or we miss the deadline with the client, right? All these things are very, very common. They happen all the time. And then number four is this idea of timekeeping, killing culture. What we mean by that is in an architecture practice, a lot of times, you know, all we sell is our time, basically. Our measure of effectiveness and efficiency is very, very tied together to our time. I'm not suggesting, of course, that uh, that we directly sell time. That's a whole nother conversation. But what I'm saying is that you only have so much time and it's, you know, you want to use that effectively. Now, in, in architectural practices, it's common that being the artist that we are, you know, being very regimented about keeping time, we feel like that kills the spirit. 
It kills the creative juice. It makes us feel like we're clocking in and we're clocking out. You know, I have this picture in my mind of these factory workers like punching the time card, click, click, you know. It's not a fun feeling. And so that can definitely kill the culture as people, you know, people are late. Um, they're not respecting schedules. All these things start to create this very subtle and very slight, almost imperceptible culture of non-performance. And these are the things that really keep team members back. It's what ultimately keeps your team from being a self-directed, self-managed team, right? So those are the problems, Ryan, if you would go into what are, what are the possibilities here? What, what would be the flip side here? If, if we didn't have those pains and those issues and problems, what would that look like? So the, so the first one, certainly, you know, the kind of possibility around not having an office in overwhelm or in constant perpetual firefighting is this experience of having meaningful and fulfilling work. And there's a sort of a proactive approach and a high level of, of leadership involved in the practice and a sense of responsibility. And, you know, this, the experience of overwhelm like dissolves, mm. it's not there. Yeah. It's either, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a straight conversation of integrity. If I'm, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling this kind of weight inside of me, it's something there's integrity. So integrity is out first place that we want to start looking at. And having a kind of um, approach to it where there's no make wrong, we can make it a lot of a, a much more easier process, and then we can get into the realm of, you know, vitality, which is kind of the opposite of overwhelm. Just being energized about mm, the work. Absolutely, yeah, I love it. The second one, loss of staff. Um, the flip side of that or the, the possibility around that would be having happy, engaged, fulfilled team members who are committed to your company vision and mission for the long term yeah. and having a low level of turnover with staff and having autonomous staff. So people who are courageous enough to start stepping into their leadership, they feel comfortable to be, to take the step into leadership. They know that there's a supportive environment for them to grow. They know that the benefits are in the long term of their of their growth and in their careers. Okay, so they, you know, we see a lot of this kind of diagonal career progression. Um, imagine having team members who were looking at looking at being with a company in the long term and building a future there and being fully. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty incredible. Fully, fully psyched up and excited by the uh by the possibility of you know what their what their work can bring yeah, um, absolutely the third one the third one the meeting deadlines or the sort of erosion of trust having a team where there's a a, a deep level of support and a deep level of trust integrity percolating all the way through the veins of the company and having um a very open and transparent if you like there's again that being able to be vulnerable and transparent in a business is quite scary it takes a lot but the possibility of being able to have a very deep level of trust um and kind of admiration and respect and love and patience with your colleagues and your and your and the leaders and the hierarchy and you know there's no complaint Kind of yeah that, imagine that, that, that right office of no complaint I mean, yeah imagine you you have implicit trust in your team members and they deliver right and then there's an opportunity to restore that yeah beautiful and then the last one we were talking about the timekeeping and how that can erode culture and create a uh, a, a business where you don't really believe anything is possible yeah right you hear Ooh. Ooh. you you hear the the business leaders, your bosses, and they're speaking stuff, and in you as an employee or the rest of the team, and going, that sounds like a nice idea, but I don't. It's just yeah, right. Yeah, right. how Imagine, many of us have thought that? I mean, yeah, wherever you're at, raise your hand. I mean, we've all yeah, <laughs> that, for sure. That that culture of yeah, right, you know, yeah, whatever. That kind of destroys it. Destroys a, a business. It keeps a business plateaued. So the yep. possibility with with integrity is having a business of, of high performance 
a high mm-hmm. performance culture, um, a high degree of leadership and autonomy and independence. So all the things we were kind of just talking about um, previously, vitality, commitment, strong office culture, which is driven by company values. Okay, so the mm. com- your employees understand what the company values are. They'd be able to explain what the company's values are to their peers and their friends. And actually the company values are so sort of deeply embedded in people that it starts to empower them and change their thinking, gives them a new way of thinking, a new possibility, a new way of looking at at the world. Right? That's, that's really powerful when you've got a business that has that sort of high performance culture and the values and the mission of the company are driving that and the mission is clearly articulated and is powerful and because the mission is is powerful and compelling the level of integrity is naturally high because everyone is committed to that vision so integrity is important another another example here of this just happened with me just this past week with one of the team members on my team so for whatever reason i had gotten we we had a, a monthly check in set up i had gotten carried away with the task that i was working on looked up and it was already a couple minutes past the hour that i was supposed to meet with this person so i look in slack and i see this person has messaged me and says enoch where are you everything okay i tried reaching out i'm like oh crap you're not dang it i missed so I jumped in there. I jumped into the meeting about five minutes late. Now, normally in a normal business situation or just in what I've experienced in the past is people kind of brush this off. I have five minutes late. Pardon me. Excuse me. Let's get on with the meeting. Uh, apologies. I was caught up with something else. Uh, you know, I forgot about whatever. We give a sense of excuses. Okay. So I didn't, when I jumped on the meeting, I didn't give excuses. I said, I, first of all, I want to acknowledge, I realized that I'm six minutes late and I, I gave you my word to be here at noon. And, uh, and she said, okay, that's uh, okay. I said, and what I'd like to know is what was that like for you? Right? So let's talk about the impact here because we, we understand the idea of integrity here in the company. So what was the impact for you? And what she said really blew my world because I realized Ryan, how much the unsaid can affect the performance of an organization when it's not addressed right? By us as leaders. So here's what she said. She said, well, I was actually worried. Um, I started, first of all, I was worried about you as a person. Is he okay? Has he gotten sick? Is something the matter? And then I started to think, well, my mind started to go down this rabbit hole of, you know, it's not, I, I wonder, is this, in, is this meeting important for Enoch? Do I matter to Enoch? Does, does this business matter to Enoch? You know, she had all these thoughts. Is my role important? Do I matter as an employee? Maybe I'm not important. Maybe Enoch doesn't care. Right now, the crazy part is, is if I wouldn't have had that conversation with this team member, this little thought would have been lodged in there. And these are the kind of things that can start to fester over time and really create a breakdown in culture. Right. And so I was able to restore integrity. And it was just a really beautiful example of how just addressing something and the process, as Ryan said, of restoring integrity can can. I mean, I don't know what to say it restore restore the integrity. We, we got complete on it. We were able to move forward powerfully into the conversation we had about performance. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. Great story. I was going to say, I've got another, um, integrity story. I mean, this one might not be appropriate for the podcast, but it's an inter- it's an interesting one because I was playing golf a few months ago with my dad Yeah, and I was on the fairway and there was a group in front of me and they were on the green and then they cleared off the green and they went onto the cart path. Mm. And, you know, when someone clears the green, it's kind of, you know, it's safe to play your shot. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I gave the ball a hefty old whack. And as often happens, it didn't go anywhere near the green and it flew to the right. Okay. Right. And it went into the trees and it went over these guys' heads. Ah, okay. And it went, and it went really good. I mean, it didn't go that close to them, but it was for them. It was very close to them, right? Yeah. And they they turned around, and one of them particularly, they just started going effing and blinding and swearing at me, and you yep. silly c word, and you how the you know, and it was, and it just caused a real tension, like you know, it was really not very pleasant. Yeah. And they walked mm. off, and they were they were a good sort of you know, they were quite a way ahead of me. I'd love to say yep. they were, you know. 200 yards but it wasn't as far it wasn't as far as that um but they were quite a bit away ahead of us and they they got in their cart and they drove off um to the next hole 
Okay, so we completed that hole, and then it was there was a bit slow on the golf course, and the next hole that we came to, there they were, right? They were still, they were in their group, and you know, um, and me and my dad kind of walked up to them. My dad was, you know, we were both a little bit. It, it was surprising their reaction because it was really aggressive, right? Yeah, sure. And um, immediately, as I saw that we were going to go and be close with them, like we we're going to be within a few meters, I just ran up to them. Because I could feel the tension, and it was—it would have just been kind of really like having yeah. to, to 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 run up there. And I ran up to them, and I said, and I, I restored integrity. I said, um, "I'm so sorry for hitting that ball at you. That was that was out of order. I'm not supposed to do that on the course. Should have waited for you to leave." Yeah, that well, was that was you, was it? That was well, I was bang out of order. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, and one of them was like uh, flipping, scared the shit out of me. I was just, probably, you know, just got to give us, and um, and immediately because he said like scared the, the shit out of me. I, yeah. I heard. I was like, that was the impact. Yeah, and yeah, and okay. I and I imme- and I just very calmly and I and I said and I said I'm so sorry. That must have absolutely scared the scared the shit out of you. I said it in the same yeah. same language. That must have yeah. been really awful. And immediately as I said that, the 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 anger and the defensiveness just dropped. And he was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did. It really, it really did frighten me. And I said, "I'm so sorry for frightening you, because you know that could have that could have cracked your head open." And you know, and I, then I, the final part, I said, I, "You got it. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to give a, a big distance, and you're clear." And, and he's like, "It's all right, mate. It's all right." And you know, the whole thing diffused. And yeah. he said, "And he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for shouting at you like that. I, I shouldn't have spoken to you like that." Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. And uh, and the oh. whole thing went off, and I was like, "Okay, now we can concentrate and play the game." And afterwards, my dad came to me and he said, "Wow, you you dealt with that really well. You dealt that you dealt with that a lot better than I would have done." And he said, "I was getting ready to tell them, don't you f-ing talk to my son like that? I'll That's right. Wrap this club, you. I'll wrap this. I'll wrap this <laughs> club around your head." That's right. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I just thought I shared that with the group a few weeks back. I thought it was it's a it was the same that's process. A good, good story. Good story. Just re- yeah, restoring integrity. Ryan, what would you say to, you know, I'm thinking back to my, my younger self and I know that, you know, I was in organizations where I could see things or I had my complaints about the things the way things were being run. And it really, my reaction at the time was like, well, there's really nothing I can do about this. I'm just the lowly intern or I'm the, the young unlicensed, you know, future architect you know, and I have a feeling there's probably a lot of people on listening to this episode thinking, wow, I can see a lot of these problems in our team and our organization and the firm where we work at. But I go home, I clock out and I just forget about it. And I say, you know, it's not my problem. And I guess that's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. What opportunity or possibility does someone who's not the leader of a firm have? I mean, what do they do in this instance when they're in a culture where there's not an understanding of integrity, where it doesn't seem like there's a lot of integrity, where a lot of these team breakdowns happen and there's a, there's a culture of high stress. There's a culture of overwork. There's a culture of always being behind the eight ball or maybe a culture of blaming. Mm. How do you, how do you lead from the bottom up? It's, so to speak? It's, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting question and it really, and again, it kind of depends on what, what vehicles are available in the business for you to be able to communicate upwards. Yeah, I thought you were um, going to say get out of the firm as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's one possibility. Yeah. Um, I, I know, for example, I've worked in practices that did have um, mechanisms in place to be able to communicate upwards. And when I was a, a much younger architect and hadn't done any of this kind of training, I would have I was trapped in my own complaint. And mm-hmm. I mean, there was other things. I wasn't it wasn't a fit, and can see that quite clearly now. But certainly I didn't make use of those mechanisms and was actually, I got comfortable in complaint and actually that was the easier thing to do. And then it led to me just leaving the business yeah, or leaving, yeah. Or leaving a company. And actually yeah. when I look back on it now, there was opportunities, um, for me to have grown into my own leadership mm. and could have taken things on. And, you know, I, you know, I was lucky. I always worked at really fantastic practices. Um, and there were those mechanisms in place where if I noticed something that was out of integrity or there was values not being aligned, I'm, I'm fairly certain that the people in charge would have had, would have, would have listened or there would have been 
it wouldn't have been easy, but there would have been a way of kind of exercising that. Now, I know that not every business is like that. And I have, on more than one occasion, had listeners of the podcast. I don't know if you've ever had this, Enoch. I've had listeners of the podcast, in the UK anyway, um, find out my phone number. How they've done that, I don't know. Uh, there's They're one good. guy. We've got to get one, them on our uh, prospecting team. One, one guy particularly, he, and he just rang me up. And, you know, he had a big complaint over what was happening in the in their company and what to do and like nobody was listening and mm. and, and that was it All right so that's i think that's quite a difficult situation and you've got as a as a employee you know even if there are no mechanisms for you to communicate upwards i mean there, and there should be there should be at least performance reviews happening quarterly mm -hmm. um there should be a way or a, a culture where you're able to kind of um share and, and discuss growth in the business and a certain level of, of, of transparency. If there's not those mechanisms, you can, you know, you can invent them. You can ask that they're, they're created or, you know, if, if you're feeling really constrained and there isn't any way to, to proceed, then moving on to another company is, is the, is a solution. Absolutely. Sometimes it's a decision you have to make. Right? We all have to make that decision. And if you're in a situation like that, I would say the first thing, it's going to start with you. So you can only control yourself. So their, their movements have been started because one person decided to show up in a different way. Right. And that, that is your chance for, to effectuate change is to up level your ability to lead and persuade. And let's face it. It's not, it's not easy to lead from when you're not in a management or a leadership position. But to lead, I use the term lead from the bottom. However, I mean, I think that's a false hierarchy, right? Because ultimately you can have lead from anywhere in the company. And the CEO is no more important than the intern who's running running blueprints as they did back in the day. I remember mm -hmm. my first architectural internships, you know, almost passing out because I'm in this small, you know, enclosed room with the, uh, the blueprint machine and that smell of ammonia, right? Like all of these are important I, I think it's really interesting, you know, if you give, as an employee, if you give yourself permission to, you know, want to contribute to the business side of a, of a firm and a practice, mm. yeah. and I, I find it hard to believe that employers wouldn't be grateful or encouraging of that, Yeah, you know, and, and often what, what happens, sometimes I speak with um, people who are I employees and, you know, sometimes I, mean, I remember I had a conversation with somebody not so long ago. Um, and they were they were upset about you know their pay. They found out how much their pay was and how much their boss was charging them out at. Mm. Now we know as business people, there's a very good reason why you're being charged out at a third of what you know the company is charging for you because the other third goes goes to pay for for Sally who works in HR and she doesn't um, you know she doesn't do any billable hours and the office equipment that you're using. Um, needs to get paid from something and the, all the other overheads of the of the business um, and the profit which then gets gets used to pay the the the, the directors or reinvested into the, into the business so that the, the company has a future for the next 10 years so there's sometimes you know like you say taking stock of your own paradigm and often there's a you know information that we don't understand that needs to be looked at, if you like. Beautiful. Well, Ryan, we're that conversation went quick, and here we are, pretty much at the end of today's episode. Hopefully, we've uh, tickled your fancy a little bit. Hopefully, we, we've been able to restore integrity with the audience and just say, you know, how much we appreciate all of our listeners out there, what you do. Uh, we would say that one thing that we are launching here at Business of Architecture is a program to. It's not going to be a, a huge program, but it is something where we think you'll get value out of it, which is the ability for you to be placed. So, for instance, if you're if you're in a job position right now where you feel like you do want to move on, where you feel like it's an unhealthy culture, it's not a fit, we have a curated group of very high-quality design firms who are looking for top-notch people who are committed, right, who want to be – who are they feel like they're high performers, they have a good culture about them but they're looking for a good fit. They want to work with a company that runs well and also does good, good design. 
Okay. So if that's you and you're feeling dissatisfied or for whatever reason, or you'd like to look at new opportunities, I'm going to invite you to send an email to hear us here at business of architecture and send the email to hire at business of architecture.com. Okay. Hire at business of architecture.com. What we'll do is we'll, we'll just keep your li- your name on file. And as our top performing clients start to look for new positions, everything from product architect to design architect to junior designer, um, we will, you'll have an inside to be able to get put with some of these amazing companies. Okay. Ryan, any last thoughts here about this conversation? I, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I mean, the other thing I was just thinking if if you're working in a company and you're feeling that kind of constraint and like things aren't being run, run well, you know, you're in the right place. First of all, listening to this podcast, and I really acknowledge you for kind of, you know, whatever's brought you to listen to the podcast because you're starting to educate yourself and starting to share that education is, can be, can be powerful. And of course you can always get in touch with us as well. If you, you know, your business leaders, they want to make a change. Um, that's yeah. a possibility. And yeah. If you, if you'd like to introduce us to your firm leaders, because you think that this is a change you'd like to see and be part of in your practice, please reach out to us. You can respond to any email that we send or feel free to share this episode. We think that would be great if you would share it, say, Hey, I know I want to help improve the business. This was a, I thought found this was a fantastic episode. Maybe have a listen to it, but it really is about sharing. Thanks for bringing that up, Ryan. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the conversation that Ryan Willard and I had today about teamwork, leadership, integrity, and that you've taken something away that can help you increase your satisfaction, increase your fulfillment, and increase your financial reward, and ultimately help you do your best work and have your best life as an architect. Now, we're running a free training coming up pretty soon. If you haven't ever attended one of our trainings, I highly encourage you to attend it. You can go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash workshop. That'll be a live webinar, small interactive webinar with me or one of our Business of Architecture leaders. I'd love to see you on there. So until next time, as always, carpe diem. Bye for now.